Hi, I'm Jack Dennis. For the last several years, we have explored fly fishing through my videos. You have met many interesting folks sharing their knowledge of fly tying and fishing, but none as engaging as my friend Gary LaFontaine. A resident of Montana with roots in Connecticut, Gary has retired from the world of behavioral psychology and now finds joy in publishing great fly fishing books. His Caddisfly book is a classic study of insects. He followed with a daring book, The Dry Fly, New Angles. His next book was Trout Flies, Proven Patterns, a collection of his own fly patterns and how to fish them. Gary's approach to fly fishing is methodical, sometimes very scientific, other times philosophical, but always passionate. Now join Gary and I as we study attraction in one of the very best places I know, the beautiful Green River in Utah. What I'm gonna to try to do is we've made two drifts by his left eye. I wanna make a drift by his right eye. Okay. It's a, it's a, a little difference. Chester, come here. Chester, buddy. come on back here. Quite a bit for that fly. Yeah. yeah, he's coming, he's searching. Okay, let's here go. Here's a shot. It's not gonna come in that shallow. There we go. Oh! oh! <laughs> he came for it. He came for it strong. Yeah. He's there is no doubt there. he had Did it. Did you burn him? I burned him. Oh. Oh, Gary, it's good to be back on the green again. It's always good to be back on the green. Well, <laughs> Emmett, what do you think we ought to do here? Well, we've got a pretty good flat right here. I think uh, we're going to see quite a few fish down on the shelf right down in here. Uh -huh. I think while you guys are putting your stuff together, I'm going to go down and uh, find a few. All right. A few big ones. Well, we'll, we'll look for some real big ones. Maybe a couple of browns, cutthroats, whatever. That's what's so great about this river. You got everything it here. It is. Chester. Well, I see you brought your pal here. He's going to be our fishing buddy today. What's his name? Well, his Indian name is Imaktua. What the heck does that mean? It means dances with people. <laughs> dances with people. I thought it meant dances with trout. <laughs> That would be a good one too. His actual name is Chester, and Chester is my fishing dog. All right. He goes everywhere. Well, Gary, this is a good place to talk about attraction. It's mid-October, not too many hatches out. We're waiting for betas. The bad weather hasn't come, so we haven't seen them hatching yet. There's still hoppers in the bushes, uh, beetles, ants, a lot of terrestrials. So what should we be doing? I think we have to look at the different aspects of attraction. I want to point out that we're going to be looking at size, color, brightness. As we look at these different aspects, probably one is going to work better than the other. One we're going to start off with is going to be the Mohawk. The Mohawk is a very subtle attractor in that it looks like a beetle. Well, you know, these are patterns from your book, Dry Fly New Angles. And I think you've got a box of them. I'd like to take a look at them. They're pretty <laughs> wild, I think. Are you ready to be shocked? <laughs> oh, I'm always ready to be shocked. Holy cow. This must be the Mohawk. That's the Mohawk. That's that actually looks... my daughter's fly. She tied that. <laughs> that's on the cover of the book. Here we have one that's uh, uh, been like really this. effective. That's the short leg wiggler. Yeah, well, this is perfect for this river because they like rubber legs on this river. And we have the double wing. That's going to be our color fly. We're going to be playing with color on that one. That's good. That's real good. Uh, but I'll tell you, this is the one I find the most interesting. That's the airhead. Ah, That's not the... named after any particular person, is it? <laughs> In your honor. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thanks yeah. a lot. <laughs> Finally have a fly named after you. This one's going to be the one that uh, tests brightness as an aspect of attraction. So we're going to try all four aspects. My feeling is that one or two of the flies will work better than the others. That's the fun of attraction. You're never quite sure what's going to happen. Well, you have to experiment then. Right. That's exactly it. You don't come in with a set plan. You come in with a very open mind. 
Well, you've kind of set some different boundaries here. You know, we're used to a, a tractors being royal wolves, humpies. Royal humpies, which is right. your pattern. But, uh, you know, those type of tractors really do imitate something. So what about your patterns? They're, they're different. They're a little bit wilder, but um, I think that every fly represents food. Now there's a certain oddity to it, and it's that oddity that makes the trout curious, that makes them come to experiment. Now you have subtle attractors, and I think the mohawk is a subtle attractor, and you have very strong attractors. I think the airhead is a very strong attractor. And it's and a bullet head type fly. It is, with foam and brightness, mm -hmm. because of the translucence through that foam. Now, as you play that violin between subtleness and strength, you've got to pick the right chords. <laughs> it sounds like we're playing music here. That's what trout fishing is, uh, a wonderful music, symphony. Music to my ears. Especially on this river. Well, what fly are we going to start off with? Let's start off real subtle. Let's start off with the mohawk. It kind of looks like a beetle, um, yet it has a wonderful sense of bulk to it. The size, the bulk, attracts trout. Well, I'm ready. It's a beautiful day. There's not many days like this left, and it's going to be winter. You're right. So let's, go <laughs> so let's do it. Come on, Chester. All right, what do we got on here? Got a mohawk. Big chunk. We're talking about shape. We're talking about the illusion of bulk, and actually with a deer here on this. Kind of a multicolored fly, too, isn't it? Yeah, you got the yep. white, which you can Coming see right very, down. very easily. Yep. I can and, see that. And then the rear portion. Okay, well, I think we've got some fish in front of us here. Well, I you know trying we got, that. I know we got one about yeah. five inches in front of us, but I can't let it come that close yeah. to us because I won't be able to make the cast. So what's your theory on the mohawk? I mean, that's kind of a... Well, this is actually not even my fly. It's my daughter's. But the mohawk... Ooh! what it is. I think you got one. Oh my god, it's a monster. <laughs> Bring out the gas. We got the nursery here. Yeah, we got the this, nursery. This is the third one. Yeah. But they're fun. Yeah, let's get him off and get back in. A little brownie. Trying to be a big one. So far we got a brown, a cutthroat, and a little rainbow out of here. Yeah. So they have all kinds in here. I think if we move up as we work up, we'll yeah. get a bigger one. Whoops, he slipped out of my hand there. He's gone. He's, He's gone. Ready. Didn't mean to quite release him that way. I'd see a, a five pounder in your future. <laughs> Fortune teller, huh? Yeah, okay, All right, right here. Right, right in that little dish in there. Well, that's drag around. That's not micro drag there. Yeah, that's not <laughs> micro drag about that one. That's a major that's a good problem. I'm gonna really slack line it to him. I'm gonna need to call him a strike because I'm gonna need some lead time to set this puppy. Yeah. Oh, set it, set it! Bad. All right, Gary. All right. I think we worked for that one. Didn't yeah, we? we did. Jeez. Stay there, babe. Stay. On that small hook, I don't want to. Yeah. Force him. All right. Big sigh of relief. Sometimes you got to work them. You know, <laughs> each time they came up to the Mohawk, though. Each time. Oh, he's hot. <laughs> he says, wait a minute. He says, we're going to fight this out in the river. Uh, what? Yeah. When you work for him that hard, it seems like you almost deserve the fish, you know. <laughs> it never mind whether you're doing it right. Just perseverance should All give right. you the uh, nod there sooner or later. Well, what's your theory on this mohawk? Theory on the Mohawk is that basically it is an attractor. In other words, it doesn't look exactly like a beetle. But because it sits so low in the water, because it has so much bulk, it looks like a generalized terrestrial, maybe an odd one. Mm -hmm. And it will bring fish splashing up to it. Well, I know right now I'm going to use it for a strike indicator, too. 
You know, when we talked about using this dry fly as a... Uh, using the attractor to pull them in close right. and the nymph to pick them up. Yeah, it's a very well, good strike. But it floats care. so well. It's all deer here. It should yeah. float well. Great. <laughs> and you can see it. Fly, yeah, that's because of the white on it. Yeah, I'm very much in favor of flies that can be seen. You know, white's a funny color, Jack. A little bit never hurts. A lot of white can tend, unless they're feeding on white insects, can mm -hmm. tend to put them off. Mm -hmm. Now, the mohawk doesn't have a lot of white on it. The back part of the body can be red, orange, green, purple, if you want to try it. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, the white is not the dominant feature. Well, I really like it, eh? I like the idea of being able to see it. You know, a lot of times I'll use a uh, royal wolf or something like that for my dry fly to float a nymph under. And even a royal wolf. I think this wolf. is better. I think this is better because the deer here, it's even more buoyant than a royal wolf. Right. Oh, let's move definitely. down a little bit, Jack. Let's, yeah, let's move down and get him on this uh, All right, let's, water let's right work here. him into the that, shallows. Look. We have uh, uh, Chester. Chester my, he says come over towards him. Chester, Chester my fish dog, is not going to. Uh, well, let's get him over here in this, in this, this beautiful line, green mossy water side. here. Whoops. <laughs> and, a net, and, a, and a fly box. There's a case for keeping your vest closed. There you go. Sigh of relief. Yeah, he wants to go back upstream. Let him do that. And we can just bring him right in here. Yeah, this to be tipping, perfect. Tick him, tipping him to the side. These Green River fish are so strong. Gary, that was a great fish. <laughs> yeah. All right. But we worked we, for we it. We worked for it. <laughs> we worked hard for that we one. We really worked hard for it. It looks like a simple fly to tie, too. Just got to work a little bit with deer hair, don't you? Yeah, it's uh, nothing complicated about it. You're stacking deer hair, and then you trim it in a radical V on top. Well, why don't you show us how to do it? Be glad to.